in my little sous chefs. You would you just you just stand there all day? Good catch. Better. Nice type of vegan mayonnaise on the top there. Sprinkle of salt and pepper. Bon appetit. A treat. <laughs> basket. Basket. Any basket. Molly, any basket. Molly, basket. How does it feel to be back at the hangar? Um, I suppose realistically, it's quite emotional. And I think the other flip side of it is just bizarre. Like how, how everything can just come so incredibly full circle over the course of the last three years. Like me and Tyler were on like the last show we could physically do before this, you know, the whole pandemic happened. And we would have continued to do them, you know, to do any indie that we possibly were allowed to do. Um, so, you know, I hope that people understand that and people remember that. It wasn't really our choice. But, you know, unfortunately there was a lot of things that weren't people's choices over the course of the last three years and professionally, just, just dark, you know, not, not oppressive, just dark, not, just not what it was always, you know, laid out that it was going to be, you know, it wasn't, that's no one's fault, it just is what it is, do you know what I mean, but there was a slightly more extended period of time where we weren't performing in front of fans that so I thought we might be able to, we probably should have kind of pushed a little bit more to, to, to bring the fans back into, back into wrestling and back into live professional wrestling. Here it is, full circle, the last independent match that we ever had, that I ever had, was at the hangar. Uh, we were unsuccessful in keeping our uh, tag team championships against Darice and the driller Dan Maloney. And then, you know, these two guys have gone on to kind of like blaze a nice little path for themselves over the course of the last three years. And, you know, it comes back full circle, as we said. And there's me against Matt Cardona. It's just wild, it all comes back to the hangar. And it all comes back to this tiny little town just outside Birmingham that, whether you like it or not, was a hub for British professional wrestling, in fact globally, for professional wrestling, it was where people came, it was where people came to make a little bit of a name for themselves or or kind of get themselves re-recognised and yeah we had it was an incredible time, an incredible time for British wrestling, an incredible time for a lot of people. very strange for just a random little city, you know, like a little sub-city like Wolverhampton to to be kind of like in the epicentre of the, of the boom of British wrestling. But, you know, for me, it's not just that. You know, Wolverhampton is my home. Don't take the piss. He's right at the back. Yeah, but this is really easy access from the back. Oh yeah, here it is. Is that really easy? <laughs> I'm really happy. Is that our toolbox as well? Brilliant. We need that. Oh. Okay, so physically, I feel pretty good. So I know I'm moving well. I, I, don't, I don't really have any kind of worries physiologically about wrestling. It's not having wrestled in front of a paying audience for three years. I don't think anything can physically really prepare you. And the fact that I've had like one, one match in the last five months, and I'm gonna do four on the bounce for the comeback tour, is pretty outrageous. Uh, and probably a little bit more than, than I should be biting off. Uh, a little bit more than I can chew type of thing. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I'd rather throw myself into the deep end I'd rather be able to then lie on the chiropractor's table on Tuesday evening and be a broken man and have to be put together because, you know, I know that this weekend is going to make me feel alive again. The endorphins that are going to be released, I probably won't feel anything for probably three, four days after. 
don't even want to hit me like a train. Like, uh, I think that's the that's the scary part of it. But yeah, if anything, it's just getting yourself prepared mentally. Like, one of the weirdest things that I keep thinking about is you get used to having adrenaline. And the adrenaline that is released when that happens with the first cheer when they say you can see you come through the, through the curtain, you know, that's something that I haven't had for so long. I don't know how many might even knock me out, who knows, but you know, that's the thing that I'm excited about is just hearing them and feeling them and feeling their energy and, and having that ebb and flow with them, you know, throughout the match. That's the thing that I'm looking forward to the most. Unbelievable. Trestlemania. <laughs> Trestlemania. <laughs> That's class. What? <laughs> Am I nervous? Um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Because there is obviously, you know, as we discussed, there's been a long time frame between matches. There's been a long time frame between performing in front of a crowd um, or a paying audience therefore and you know just and, and you know that's something that I feel like the industry is built on you know like you talk to all the legends you know the Ric Flairs and the Arn Andersons and and all these legends you you hear them talk and you hear fans and you hear promoters talk about he was a draw right you put this guy on a flyer he sells tickets and that's what I view as being a professional wrestler. That's quite obviously my job. We got signed, you know, I got signed for WWE. That will forever be, well, definitely, I don't, you know, there's probably things that might be better in my career, um, but it's gonna be tough to top that. It's gonna be tough to be able to, to top something that is like, yeah, WWE saw us and went, we have to have that. We have to have a brand here and it has to be orientated around these few people. And you know, to those 16 people that, that went out there and did that tournament, that should mean the absolute world. Everyone should hold that kind of mantle and hold on to that because that was an incredible moment for professional wrestling. It was an incredible moment for the business and it should forever be the, the one thing in the back of your mind if you ever think that you can't do it or you ever feel like you are nervous is the fact that Triple H and his crew flew over all the way over here and selected these people to be the face of WWE outside of North America. I mean, that's, when, when I think about those things, there's not a, there's not a smidgen of nerves. Mm. We're getting somewhere. My friends and family have just been incredible. Like everyone has just supported me so much, and they always have. They always will do. You know, the missus will even say to like, you know, the the past three years, you know, hasn't been the Trent Seven that you see, laughing and joking and twizzling mustaches. Do you know what I mean? There is a side of it that is just frighteningly just crap to be honest you know not being able to do what you do the only reason i ever ever started in wrestling was to improve the formula product what i saw as a, as a kind of gap in the market was to provide something that was just a little bit more hard hitting a little bit more fast paced a little bit more whether it was funny or not it didn't really matter but just something where the crowd just got a little bit more value for their money and now you know you fast forward to now and value for money is is the thing that we talk about the most especially now with the price of everything and inflation and we're going into a recession and it's like people need people still need to be entertained people still need an outlet wrestling fans need an escape people need an escape whether whether you're a wrestling fan or not everyone you know whether you're standing on a terrace in front of 24,000 people down at the Molyneux if that's in escapism that allows you to kind of forget about that mundaneness or forget about that those bills or forget about that shit that happens in in the real world or the stresses and the trials and the tribulations of just living or just getting through life 
um, in the world that we live in now, then so be it. That's the point, isn't it? Um, and that's the one thing that I feel as wrestlers or as wrestling promoters or as people in the wrestling industry, I feel the thing we've got the most control of is the quality of the entertainment that we provide for the customers pound. These are the opportunities that we've got within our kind of industry and within our business to captivate people on such tiny little levels and all that means so much as a, as, as a, as a fan. And that's what I'm saying. Like when I go to shows, I want to, I need to have a little bit of involvement. I need there to be a to and a fro and a relationship between the wrestler or a relationship between the performer or the ref or even the kids sitting at ringside, you know what I mean? Or catching the towels. Like there's, there's an incredible opportunity for people to connect with people. If there's anything that we've learned over the course of the last three years, that we should be, that should be, the absolute direction we should go in is connections. The, what, the work that the people have done over the last two years to keep this thing going has been incredible. And there's nothing I'll say against them. You know what I mean? Like, th th there's people that have stood there as heads of, you know, like heads of the industry and just gone, took the whole thing on their back and fair play to them. Let's all get together now and let's absolutely smash this and let's make professional wrestling the absolute premium form of entertainment that it always has been and always should be and forever hopefully will. If I could pick the, the, the two main things that I want to achieve in the time that I spend back on the Indies, no matter how long or short it is, the first thing is a bit of unity. The industry needs to come back together. It's very discombobulated. Everyone needs to come back together and, and just remember exactly what this was for. The escapism, the entertainment. Everyone can be a part of wrestling. Whether you're a fan, a ref, a, a videographer, a cameraman, a backstage, someone who just helps put the ring up. That's what I want to kind of, you know, focus on. It's just that little bit of unity about just getting everyone back together and just making sure that everyone understands that this is a this is a wonderful place where people can just get together and be part of something really incredible and really unique. All I've ever wished for like I said before, was to provide people with the best quality entertainment they did, they A deserve and B that I could possibly give. So as far as looking to the future or what my goals are or where do I see myself in next years, I think all of the focus has to just come down to this weekend and know full well that all I really want to do is entertain these people. And to do that, I have to become a professional wrestler. Yeah.